Bonjour. This is Stefan Anderson, the piss drinker. And tonight I'm going to drink some Night Shift Whirlpool Pale Ale, which is in a tall can with a swirly thing on it and the Hop Owl. This is a beer that Night Shift's been making constantly for at least a year because when they released it oh, about a year and a half ago or so, it quickly became their fastest growler selling beer at the brewery of all time. And now it's it's been a regular one. They can it every once in a while. This one was canned on September 30th and now it's October 12th, so it's about less than two weeks old. So it's still extremely fresh. And this one is, they might, you might call it a session IP almost, except for the fact that it's not fairly bitter at all. And that's because of the name in a way, because they don't really use any hops, any bittering hops. <laughs> and where they throw them in early and boil them and get the, the bitterness, they throw them all in at the end in the whirlpool and dry hop it extensively with mostly mosaic hops. I remember I'm also saying they use this Australian hop called Summer that you don't see that often. It seems like it's usually in hop blends. Um, I think Summer is just adds to the kind of a lemony, spritzy quality of it, whereas the mosaic in this beer really just makes it a huge pineapple mango peach fruit cocktail that's extremely juicy and it was one of the beers that got me back into my obsession with hops because I realized that these new hops and new ways of hopping beers are is so different from the IPAs everyone's been drinking for the last 10 years or so and I'm going to try to describe it now though I've had it many times before and it's been pretty consistent. So, take a look at that. You can see it's very pale and hazy, as is the new New England style. Nice high carbonation and a extremely white eggshell white head because I'm sure they don't they just probably use just straight up regular pale malt for this. Probably not really Pilsner malt because they don't really even they don't even care about specialty malts with this. It's all about the hops. And the aroma is still very amazing. It doesn't it smells like those candy peach rings and just fragrances. It doesn't if you stuck this aroma in someone's nose, they wouldn't think of beer. And it's extremely clean. There's no yeastiness. There's no... I don't really get notice any kind of malt quality. Maybe cracker, but not even. The ex an extremely white saltine with no salt. And it doesn't quite have... It has a, a touch of that arugula, green onion... Um, not quite garlic, but that intense herbal salad flavor that I get from Mosaic and another new way of hops, along with the extremely juicy tropical fruit quality. And the aroma is just, it's very strong. I mean, it's, I didn't say it, but when you open the can, it immediately fills the room. And it's, there's some kind of, it's a little bit spicy, but nothing like, I don't get any bitter orange peel or anything much like black pepper. <clears throat> the feel on the tongue's a little bit pricklier. But it's somehow got a pretty full body for being 4.5%, in my opinion, and not having really any malt flavor. It probably is helped out by that big haziness in there whenever it's something's unfiltered to this extent and it's in the beer so 
homogeneously like this, it's going to add some to the mouthfeel, which helps kind of make up for the low malt presence and body. And it tastes so much just like some kind of pineapple, guava, mandarin, uh, spritzer. It's just the, it's, it's just like pineapple juice, but not sweet. Like I'm saying all these sweet flavors, but it's not sweet at all. It's, it's almost completely dry. Not quite as dry as some, you know, years aged wild ales where they've been eating everything they possibly can. Um, but it is very dry, but not very bitter because they don't really use the hops for that. Maybe they do something like first work kettle hopping where they throw in some hops way in the very beginning but that usually just to help bump up the overall hop character in the end um, but it's it's very refreshing and kind of an, an irresistible beer the body's not quite fluffy it needs a little bit more carbonation just a little more body maybe if they threw in some some dextrose or something but it's just like hop cracker water and like there's a little bit of that intense herbal almost like green garlic you know spring onion sort of thing happening but it's not getting into this and where it can get really intense I feel like with double IPAs where they use a bunch of galaxy and mosaic and and stuff like that and it ends up having a, a kind of garlic almost smoky quality to it this is just has that kind of peppery spicy arugula that's the most that's the kind of spice you're getting in the greenness I'm getting from this which makes it kind of I guess deal with all that fruitiness too and it makes it not as one-dimensional as you might think a beer that's made like this would be and I think it's because of that mo the mosaic hops that are just I don't think, no, I mean, the craft beer world can't get enough of them, and I still can't get enough. But there are new varieties coming out, so I don't know. I'm sure this one will be popular forever, but I don't know if it's quite, a, quite be as popular as Citra, which seems like it's, they're always going to be brewing beers with just Citra, and people are going to be going crazy for it or something. I don't know if that's ever going to go down, but. And it seems like in these beers from Night Shift, like this one and some of the morphs that use some of the newer wave hops, I get a, a sort of ambrosia salad, which I don't know if people know that. It's a kind of trashy salad that has like the canned mandarin oranges and mini marshmallows and coconut and sometimes like maraschino cherries, but I don't, I'm not really getting this, but it, it has this sort of coconut marshmallow candy quality that might be slightly from the yeast but I'm not getting any intensely fruity or spicy or any sulfurous or anything like that that you'd normally notice from the yeast. It seems like the yeast is kind of just blending well into this fruit salad experience. Um, I'd probably give this one a nice 9 out of 10 just because I love it so much. Maybe it's not the world's most complex beer, but it's not completely one-dimensional. And it is completely irresistible, and I feel like they really nailed this one on the head. This was, like, I think, one of their first hoppy beers that was in line with the new New England style of Trillium and Treehouse and all that sort of thing. And they've kept the, the quality up there very high, which Night Shift doesn't always do with all their beers, I've noticed. But they make so many different ones and of all different styles. But this one is... Always gonna, I'm always going to be tempted to buy whenever I see the cans in any stores or anything like that. So, Whirlpool. Suck it.